It's not often that winners claim an election was rigged, but the president keeps insisting there was widespread voter fraud in 2016 without any evidence whatsoever to support his claim. It's indisputable. Every single reputable study on earth has shown that in-person voter fraud is at like 0.00002%. You know, every rare once in a while they find someone. And the last couple of times it's been someone who voted for Trump and who tried to vote a second time for Trump because they were so worried about the other side committing election fraud that they wanted to commit election fraud to combat it. So Okay, so if voter fraud is more rare than reports of UFOs, Bigfoot, or the Loch Ness Monster, why are we even talking about it? Because fake voter fraud provides an excuse to require voter ID. Fundamentally, what voter ID laws say is you can't vote unless you show some form of ID. The problem with that is that 10% of people in the country don't have government-issued photo ID. So that's 21 million eligible voters who can't vote if they live in a state that requires photo ID. Getting photo ID isn't easy. For a start, each state has different voter ID requirements. In Texas, hundreds of thousands of eligible voters didn't go to the polls in 2016 because they didn't realize their driver's license was valid voter ID. And getting a driver's license or other ID means producing documents that many people just don't have. Uh, not to mention that you need transportation to get to the DMV or the county registrar, which if you don't have government-issued photo ID, you don't have a driver's license, so that's tough. And most states, when they pass these voter ID laws, they pair it with the closure of DMVs in areas that are low-income areas, areas with communities of color, uh, where they're more likely to need ID so that it's much more difficult to even get to a DMV because you have to travel 10 miles or more without a car to get one. One of the many groups of people who frequently don't have birth certificates are elderly people who either were born in rural areas when you didn't get one, um, and elderly Black people who were born under Jim Crow, which means they usually weren't allowed to be born in hospitals, and they sure as hell weren't going to the county clerk to get a birth certificate. Many eligible voters find these obstacles insurmountable. Take Marvin, for example. He never had a birth certificate, and being in a wheelchair makes it tough for him to travel, and needing to go to multiple offices around Atlanta, do all the paperwork, and pay $100 in fees was just too much. When Kat told him her group, spread the vote, would help with transportation and paperwork and cover the fees, he was so happy, she told me, he cried. People like Marvin are being effectively disenfranchised by voter ID laws. 90% of the time it's Republican controlled legislatures that are passing voter ID laws. They've made it very clear for many, many years that they can only win if fewer people vote. And the fact is, if you look at the raw numbers in most states, most states are more and more and more progressive. Georgia, North Carolina, Texas, these states are actually very progressive states. And if everyone in the state is able to vote, then the people who are in power lose power. And I don't know, I've never had any power, but it must be great because people are willing to do anything to keep it. So having power and money must be awesome. Uh, and so in order to keep that power, they have to make sure people can't vote. And that is why Kat left a promising law career in LA to travel the country and work with people like Marvin. Voter ID laws are a very thinly disguised form of voter suppression. And that is just plain un-American. Spread the Vote is a nonprofit funded by individual donations and just got their first grant. They work closely with local grassroots organizations and service agencies to find and help eligible voters, especially in battleground states. Many of the volunteers work remotely, and Kat is very proud of her new app, which makes that easier and more efficient. We definitely love uh, remote help, um, and there are a lot of opportunities. Most of Kat's volunteers are women, and I asked her why it seems that women are leading the resistance today. I mean, women have been at the forefront of every movement. Uh, we just usually don't get the credit for it. Uh, but there's really no movement or revolution in history that hasn't had women pushing it. Uh, you know, the difference now is that we have, you know, some measure of equality and we have the same access to communications and tools, etc. So we can actually say, hey, I'm here. Let's face it, the president is always going to do stuff that makes us crazy. But now, thanks to Kat and other resistors, we can do something about it.